Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Great Partition in Europa Universalis 4. I am Paragon Saber, and really nothing here is as it seems, is it? Last time, we saw the combined forces of Nitra and Poland-Lithuania get pretty much pub-stomped by a uh, rather large, not, not a coalition, but a large alliance chain headed up by Brandenburg and some Kandatieri from Lubeck. Mazovia made some more territorial gains at Nitra's expense, and Poland lost no tech at the very least, and I believe Poznan as well, to Brandenburg. Other than that, Russia finally uh, got up and attacked Novgorod again, took a lot of the Russian heartland from them, though Novgorod still exists, barely. Theodoro was fighting a war with Kasim, I believe uh, Odiev and Trebizond. Well, maybe not Odiev, but I know Trebizond and Circassia were trying to help him out with that. Uh, nothing appears to have changed hands, though. I know they were going after Tin, and that still most certainly under Kasim. In the Balkans, a few things have changed. Saruhan formerly ex exercising a bit of uh, hegemony over this, but that no longer the case. They lost things like uh, Kirkalissa and Edirne to the likes of Kandar and Mantessa. Selenik lost to, or uh, sorry, Selenik, the only thing they're ho keeping a hold of over here. Uh, Philobay lost to Bulgarian separatists. That's the third time those kind of separatists have succeeded in this campaign. Uh, and now only reduced to the provinces of Hudavendigar and Selenik, Macedonia. Uh, Kandar has done very well for itself. They have all of Northern Anatolia and uh, have expanded into the Balkans as well. That alliance with Mentessa has helped them out quite a bit. Persia is still looking quite strong, though they do have a coalition, or they did have a coalition against them. Uh, that has apparently disbanded, and they've also picked up an alliance with Bahmanis. So uh, maybe hoping to extend their influence into India at some point in the future. In the east, Wu and Shi are at war. Wu the emperor, Wu with very, very little mandate, Kind of wondering why she isn't uh, going after him a bit more. I think those armies would lose to even those uh, with vastly inferior numbers. But uh, regardless, for now, she choosing not to engage and uh, letting its territory be sieged up. In Japan, there are only two tags left. The Shogun Ashikaga and Wasugi, whose days are likely numbered. We do say goodbye to Akamatsu, the revolter tag released at the beginning. They are now gone, and uh, we, we just have the last two standing. That's enough of a recap for now. Let's resume it. I did promise we'd take a look at the Great Power List. So uh, here's that. Austria standing at number one right now. They have 617 development. Spain sitting at 603. Tech modified. As soon as they pick up the printing press, they'll be number one again. Great Britain in third at 511. Persia in fourth with... 407, though 693 should they start picking up uh, institutions before global trade spawns. Russia in fifth with only 298 uh, tech modified, but 507 if you uh, don't look at the institutions they failed to embrace, those being colonialism and the printing press. Gascony has regained its status as a great power in sixth with 237 development. Morocco, welcome to the great powers list. They have 225, 271 once the printing press gets down there. And Venice holding on to Great Powerdom at 8th with 224 development. Even more Bulgarian separatists popping up, this time for Kandar. These provinces have changed hands a lot of times. Pretty sure they've been under Wallachia, Hungary, Bulgaria, Byzantium. Uh, Saruhan, I think, got up there at one point. Now Kandar. And, uh, the Bulgars, they, they want their own state. They just keep gaining it and then losing it again. Lots of stronger powers around them. Speaking of stronger powers, Odiev has done very, very well for itself. Starts off, of course, as a one-province miner in the province of Odiev, and have grown to take what is usually, uh, southern Lithuania, but now it is, uh, western Odiev. They are allied with Russia and Theodoro. Good degree of protection, uh, being allied to Russia, but we can't help but wonder how long that's going to last. Uh, at the very least, Odiev itself usually under Russia, 
uh, as well as Tula and Yelech, which uh, Tula usually Ryazani at the beginning and Yelech usually under the Great Horde, but uh, both of those usually swallowed by Russia in the course of a normal game. Odiev actually transferring trade power to Russia. And does still have this vessel of Imeratia. Really, that just seems like a good way to invite conflict with Persia, but uh, for now, Persia has not decided to go after that. Keva has done well in the mid step area. They're uh, not really holding on to the biggest of armies, but they do have quite a bit in land area, including some decent provinces like Bukhara, Karakalpik. Urgench, their capital, uh, developed up to 33. That's pretty good. They've really survived through Persia's grace. Uh, they're guaranteed by them, and also allied with Afghanistan, Delhi. So, uh, it's pretty good. Either Afghanistan is fighting somebody, or they just have decided that they don't really need an army. Or there's 3,000. That's all we're seeing from them. Uh, we know that they can build a larger army, but they've chosen not to. Uh, they do have an inroad down into India, though. At one point, Sindh was completely wiped out, or almost wiped out. They actually do still have these three provinces down here. Regardless, Afghanistan with that inroad, and uh, appears to have taken this province of Marwar from Nagar as well. Delhi is at war with Montfang, Pegu, Arakan, Dali, Sukhothai, Khmer, and Lanjiang. So they are pulled into a great Southeast Asian war. Uh, what's going on over here? Well, for one, Ayutthaya is gone. <laughs> I don't know how in the world I missed that. I, I don't think personal unions can happen down here, but... Pasai has eaten Ayutthaya. Given a little bit to Sukhothai, a little bit to Perak. Uh, Malacca is also gone. So, things have changed down here. Pasai looking like the eminent power in this region. They have all of the island of, uh, well... All aside from the uncolonized regions of the island of Sumatra, and uh, have moved on to mainland, or at least southeastern Asia as well. That said, they are at war with Bengal, Delhi, and Tibet, and that would be the Muanfang Bengalese Punitive War. So, uh, Bengal managed to build itself up a coalition of everybody in Southeast Asia. For now, they're looking to... I think they're doing okay. They have uh, a few of their provinces occupied, but... Things could certainly be going worse for them. Who else did it, uh, did it say it was involved in this war? Of course, Bengal and uh, Delhi. Tibet as well. I, I can only fall back on my usual word. Interesting. Emperor Wu did win this war, uh, taking a few provinces in here from Xi. They're starting to look pretty good, but they still have zero mandate. And have actually lost a tributary. Still holding on to Ming, Yi, Miao, and Qin as tributaries. But haven't managed to make tributaries out of the likes of Yin, or Zhan, or even Shun. Shun, a one province miner, would probably love to become a tributary, but... Uh, not the case. Kalka has spawned up here. I almost wonder... Uh, oh, uh, they appear to have taken Mongolia's place. Uh, I'm not sure if that's... Uh, I've seen this tag before, but I don't know where it originates from. Ternate and Tador uh, continuing to stare at each other across Halmahera Island. Down here, uh, Bhutan still... Kicking. Thought they had more provinces to start, but perhaps not. Brunei has uh, at one point eliminated its competition over here. Can't remember who that is, but uh, they've taken a lot of this big island here. Not much colonization happening over here. Whoever uh, decides to take exploration first will uh, definitely get quite the advantage, though. Some very good provinces to be colonized in this region. Uh, a lot of them are 9 and 10 development. For example, uh, Sumbawa is 8, Flores are 11, uh, Sumba is only 5, but if someone were to colonize Timor, that's 9 and uh, 9 and 9. Yamdena has 9. 
five, seven. This little island of Ambon is 12. And up here in the Philippines, none of which start colonized. You have uh, you know, six, 12, Manila is 14, has a center of trade. People should get colonizing. Maybe, uh, maybe Ryukyu. Come on, Ryukyu, you can do it. Well, let's uh, let's look back over at Europe. I think that's enough of Asia for now. Actually, uh, let's let's go glance at Africa again. So we formerly saw Ethiopia at war with Oman, but it doesn't appear that they've taken much of anything. Uh, they certainly didn't take Sanaa or Adan. So perhaps somebody else got involved and stopped them, or they just didn't do much with the war. Uh, say hello to Sharjah again. Perhaps they were released from Oman as a result of that peace deal. Uh, they're allied with Oman, so Oman probably looking to peacefully vassalize them. Wouldn't be surprised if they succeeded in that. Not much seems to have changed between uh, Mogadishu and Morsangali, but Kilwa now uh, appearing to want some of Mogadishu. Kilwa has really kind of rested on its laurels this game, hasn't done all that much, but now finally looking to expand north. Mogadishu itself, a pretty decent province, has probably been developed a bit. Starts off as 10 development, now 16, and is a center of trade in the... Uh, which node? In the Gulf of Aden node, actually. Interesting, that. So, yeah, cool, uh, we'll probably get some out of that. We see Spain has done a lot of colonization on uh, in South Africa, including the great province of Cape. And it uh, looks like the only one they have left to really get in those couple of states is Senku. Not a great province itself, but, uh, you know, gotta get the completion, right? And uh, as soon as they colonize up here, we might see Spain looking to take a bite out of Sofala. Stage still set for a big battle between Cuba and Kikonja, aside from the fact that they're still allied. Perhaps they're willing to just uh, share the land down here. Cuba still has a few small tags to wipe up over here, including the last remnant of Congo, as well as Ndongo, Soyo, and Luongo. Though, uh, for now, they are protecting Soyo. Banyoro was wiped out over here, Nkor uh, putting in the death blow. How are things going to shake out now? Rwanda only allied with Burundi, so it looks like Nkor might be the next to go in that region. Elodia has done okay for itself. They're kind of isolated over here and do share a border with the Mamluks, but uh, they're protected by Ethiopia. Uh, I know Funj and then Darfur spawned in this area while we weren't looking uh, too closely at it, but uh, Elodia taking that formerly uncolonized land over. None of it all that great. Pretty sure it's all three development. It is, but uh, that's land that they didn't have before, and should they, like many others, choose to take exploration, well, frankly, they'd probably get eaten by Songhai, but, uh, <laughs> you know, that's an expansion path for them. Spain has done even more colonization down here, and actually has a 20 stack ready to defend against natives. Uh, as for the actual natives of this area, Benin has really been the target of that expansion by Spain. Guessing Nupe might... Uh, well, Nupe under attack by Katsina, or Katsina. One of the ungobbled province, or uh, ungobbled fellows there for Songhai. Or perhaps Songhai is straight up involved in that war, or perhaps has initiated its own? Yep, just both Songhai and Katsina involved in that war. Uh, is Katsina perhaps a vassal of Songhai? Nope, they are allied, and uh, protected from aggression from their uh, ally <clears throat> of Songhai by further alliances with Kanembornu, Air, and Kong. Kong has done quite well for themselves. They start pretty small down here, but have taken a lot of former Malian land, as well as eaten a lot of other tags in here. In Morocco, uh, well, there's a reason they became a great power. They've eaten even more of Tunis, haven't gotten to the city itself, which is a good prize, 35 development. They'd certainly love to take that, but uh, I'm sure they'll get there. Tunis no longer protected by an alliance with Austria. 
Speaking of, uh, that big old boar up here, how, how did that turn out? Ho ho ho! Oh, Milan bit off more than they could chew, that's what happened. The city of Cremona has taken Milan. The uh, trading city, now only allied with Aachen and Munster, no longer protected by Venice's trade league. And uh, speaking of, Venice now fighting at least Serbia, Epirus, and Byzantium. Anybody else? Naples also involved in that war, but uh, Venice looking pretty strong. It looks like Siena might actually be on their side. Let's check that. Naples, you are at war against... Oh, dear. Now, that'd be the Austrian purge of Florentine heresy. And, uh... Is, is that only Austria? Nope, that's... Austria, Palatinate, Cologne, Milan, Papal State, and Sardinia. And on the other hand, Venice and Siena. Naples, formerly doing quite well for themselves. Again, formerly a great power. Probably not going to be the case after this. Uh, I'm guessing that Venice wouldn't mind taking some territory from them. At the very least, they'll, they'll be losing some alliances. And... Venice just... Ah, okay, so Venice attacked uh, Epirus, who has been guaranteed by Naples the entire game. Looks like they're going to honor that guarantee till the end. Kandar has further consolidated itself in the Balkans. Saruhan is dead. Rest in peace, the White Hand. Kandar now controlling Philibe and Tarnovo, as well as Celestria and Kirkilisa, Burgas. Selenik has gone to Venice. Hudavendigar has gone to Mentessa. Mentessa is still holding on to that alliance with Kandar. Kandar has uh, at one point lost Kastamonu to the Persians, though. Perhaps a threat in war occurring there. Persia now looking to mop up the rest of Syria. They haven't bit off more than they could chew by any means, but uh, an inspired defense going on here. Syria can still raise 28,000 men. A lot of these provinces very rich, even though they have lost one of the richer ones in Baghdad in one of the previous wars. In Baghdad, 21 development. Whereas Damascus at 39, Aleppo at 23, Saida at 22, Tarabolus al Sham at 24, Antioch up to 28, Karaman at 29. Syria must have had some very good rulers, or uh, perhaps just got lucky from all of the development done by others over there. I mean, some of those have been under Syria from the beginning. Regardless, great provinces explains why they can still field 28,000 with so few. A lot of Venice's Adriatic territory being occupied by the forces of Byzantium, Epirus, and Serbia but uh, they can throw around this larger stack and uh, whatever hope or help these guys wanted to get from Naples is not going to be forthcoming. Naples very nearly full occupied by the forces of Austria and the Palatinate. Though uh, they are holding their army in reserve down here uh, on Sicily. Speaking of the Sicilian tag, they got kicked off of Sicily in 1445 by Naples, but uh, nobody's really wanted to get Malta. So, uh, they're just, they're just around. <laughs> Can't say all that much about them, really. Haasa occupied by Hejaz. Hejaz has taken some pretty significant losses to Ethiopia along this coastline, but uh, looking to reestablish themselves in the peninsula, maybe uh, gain the ability to contest Oman. They are definitely the main ones down there. And Persia destroying utterly destroying Syria. Not only taking provinces like Aleppo, Rabah, As... Sahilia... I think those are the only ones that they directly took. I think they had Mirage earlier. But also making them release Lebanon in Tarablis al-Sham and Saida. Lebanon releasing with 40-some uh, development. It's gotta be nice for them. Another tag that uh, got eaten early, by Sir uh, this time by Syria, but uh, now released by Persia. Though really, the tag that that, tr uh, 
that release benefits the most is the Mamluks, should they decide to take advantage, as both Syria and Persia have a 15-year truce with Lebanon. Suppose Karaman could give him a shot too, but uh, really, that's the Mamluks to take, assuming Lebanon doesn't get any alliances. Theodoro. Theodoro has taken Kizilyar, Tin, and uh, I think those are the main two provinces that they took there. But Kasim severely reduced, uh, appearing... Uh, I'm pretty sure that is by the efforts of Russia, Theodoro, perhaps Circassia. Ostrakhan spat out yet again. No truce there, so I think Separatists might have caused that. And uh, the Great Horde out again, but Russia jumping on that. Odiev still enjoying Russia's protection. Theodoro allied with Odiev Trebizond Circassia, so Russia now sharing a border with them. Uh, their days might be numbered. Unfortunate. I love Theodorian purple. It's a great color. Very royal looking. The Goths doing as well for themselves as one might hope this game. Not Gothic invasion levels by any means, but uh, they, they have done well. Very few territorial changes have occurred in the French region, though it does appear that Picardy has been integrated by Great Britain. But Normandy's still around, still only allied with Augsburg. Why hasn't somebody attacked them? That's easy pickings for possibly even Brittany, but really you'd be looking more at uh, Austria or Great Britain to want that province. Uh, Gascony doesn't have the means to fabricate a claim on them. They'd have to take Alan Sion from Brittany, and Brittany protected by Toulouse-Lorraine. So, I think Gascony itself could still beat that entire alliance. Uh, maybe not. I saw only the 9,000 down there for Toulouse, but uh, Toulouse actually holding on to 21,000. Not a great power, but uh, they're also protected by Spain. Gascony still allied with Spain? They're guaranteed by Spain. Allied with the Pope in Venice. Toulouse actually is a great power. I stand corrected. Must have uh, vastly enriched some of this land over here. I know Languedoc starts out as like a, a 20 development province. That is the case. Toulouse itself up to 39. They have Savoy, which is a 29. 15, 10, Nice a 12, Provence a 22, Avignon a 12. Definitely a lot of development packed into that uh, little nation. Enough to make him the seventh great power. Morocco still in eighth, but uh, uh, Venice actually up in sixth. Venice formerly in eighth. Venice has eaten a lot of Serbia. That explains that. The others, as expected, Spain having now embraced the printing press up in first again. I think Austria's actually lost some development, so maybe they did lose a war in there. Regardless, they uh, have 599, Great Britain with 554. If Persia were to magically embrace both institutions, they would be in first as it stands in fourth with 413, and Russia still holding on to fifth with 345, 619 after institutions are embraced. Let's take a look at the institution map mode. Russia does have colonialism present in a fair bit of its land, including uh, a lot of its richest land. I'm surprised they haven't embraced that. Uh, I know some of the provinces over here fairly rich, and hold that thought, what is Delhi doing up here? Delhi trying to protect Kiva? Russia going for Kiva, fighting Kiva, Persia, and Delhi. Actually... Yes, yeah, that is the Russian crusade against Kiva. I think Russia has bitten off more than they could chew here. Kiva long enjoying a guarantee from Persia. And, uh, I mean, I'll, I'll check the ledger again. Uh, we were looking at territory before, but... Yeah, Russia with 70,000 right now, but pain... Or, uh, pain. Looking at Spain there in second, but Persia very nearly able to equal that on their own. Uh, they have their own 60k. And, uh, I mean, Kiva and uh, Delhi can definitely contribute as well. Right now, I'd say that Russia will uh, stand to lose quite a bit from this war. I mean, they have no manpower, for goodness sakes. We see the city of Cremona fully occupied by their noble rebels. 
No fun for them. I mean, I guess it could be Milanese separatists, which would be worse. And we do, do see Sardinia with a foothold on the mainland. Won't be able to form Sardinia Piedmont with uh, those sorts of provinces. They'd have to get up to Savoy and take on great power allied with Spain to lose. But uh, still, still good for them. The results of that war between uh, Austria and Naples have come through. Umbria given back to the Pope. Uh, and sorry, Austria already had Ancona, but they did make them release Urbino. Florence just outright vassalized by Austria. Don't think Siena got anything in that peace deal. Genoa now long gone, by the way, as you can see uh, through looking at the provinces in that region. Poland and Nitra have been pretty quiet recently, though uh, Brandenburg enjoying a rather small stack of Polish separatists. Not seeing their army, uh, only 1,000 here in Newmark for Brandenburg, whereas their one province minor neighbor in Pomerania has 12. Not sure what happened there to Brandenburg, but uh, you throw 1k at 12k and that's an overrun, so... Poland has just integrated Lithuania. No Commonwealth this game. Of course, Poland missing a lot of the provinces that it would usually need to uh, to form the Commonwealth. A lot of those former Teuton land, I think they do need uh, Danzig. I know they need like Marienburg. I think they need Konigsberg. And uh, those going to Mazovia instead. So Poland cutting Mazovia in half uh, with Lublin and Brasta. And uh, a goodbye to Lithuania. Do see that Nitra has taken the rest of Wallachia. Wallachia pretty severely weakened after losing uh, a lot of that Bulgarian land earlier, though we do see a city of Vidin spawned. Another one for Venice's trade league. That is a massive, massive trade league. Well done on their part. Let's actually check some of the trade nodes. In Venice, Venice with most of the trade power, Austria competing pretty well. Constantinople, most of it held by Kandar as they own Constantinople itself. Significant bits from Mentessa, a little bit from Venice. Uh, let's go look at Genoa. In Genoa, quite a bit from Naples, Toulouse with uh, a large portion, Siena with 28%. Though Sardinia holds Genoa itself, only 5% from them. In the English Channel, as rather expected, uh, Great Britain with the vast majority, though a little bit, or a fair bit from Brabant and some from Holland. And uh, another fun one, Zanzibar. Zanzibar can be a very rich trade node, only one outlet down to the Cape of Good Hope, so you can trap a lot of the trade from the, uh, well, from Indonesia and India down here, uh, should you control a lot of this. Right now only 8.9, not as rich as it could be. Fair bit to Kilwa, fair bit to Safala, fair bit to Sakalava, and the rest taken up by Spain. Spain, of course, having a lot of, uh, the Cape of Good Hope area. Probably wanting to pull some that way. Get some of that sweet, sweet spice Indonesian trade flowing up into Europe. We do see Marahan released from Warsangali. Uh, unsure if that was the result of a war. Are they a vassal? No? Guessing, uh, guessing a war did happen down there. Warsangali forced to only release Marahan. I think they're the same uh, size as before. Any good provinces over here? Basasos and eight. Las Cori is a 15, and that's the capital. No surprise there. The capitals, uh, th the AI does like to develop those. It's got to help with institution spread. And would you look at this? I was really under the impression that Russia was going to get wrecked by this alliance between uh, Persia, Kiva, and Delhi, but has instead pushed down pretty far into Kiva. Part of that uh, likely due to Persia leaving about half of its troops at home. You know, Persia can bring 30k to bear. Sorry, 60k to bear. Actually, closer to 70, really. And actually outnumbers Russia right now, though they do have no manpower. But uh, we see... Uh, 18, 21, 
only 25k of Persia's men up here, and uh, 38 down here just sitting in Persia. And that would be the timer. As expected, the Mamluks did eat Lebanon, but uh, I'd better stop talking before this video goes on far too long. Thank you all for watching. This has been The Great Partition. I'm Paragon Saber. See you next time.